Okay, let's review what we've done in the previous video and then move forward to the last step of our um, process and show the tweets uh, that the user submits. So the first thing uh, we have on the left of the screen, we have a new a form actually. Uh, so this form submits uh, the data that the user types uh, to a method called send tweet. So this method receives the information that the user types and then uh, it saves all the data into the local storage so that we can later um, retrieve them and show them onto the page. Uh, how we do that is by using these um, where is is by using this tweet uh, message that we uh, bind with this text area. So the text area is a theme model directive uh, which we use to bind the whatever the user types in the text area with these uh, tweets, tweet message um, property. Then we have a max, a max tweet uh, property which we use to um, calculate how many characters the user uh, has left to type and we combine this max uh, length uh, of the tweet with this tweet message property dot length so we calculate the length of the um, tweet property while the user is typing and that updates uh, dynamically and so the user knows how many characters he has typed and how many he has left thanks to this uh, max tweet property and we also use this max tweet property inside the attribute max length uh, on the text area to limit the amount of characters the user can type in the text area. And after that, we implemented the tweet, send tweet uh, message, uh, the send tweet method that actually uh, what it does is to save uh, inside the tweets array. Uh, our tweet message, uh, which is made of a text, uh, which is whatever the user types in the text area, plus a date. Uh, this date, we should update this date uh, to a local, uh, local string, so that we can output either the date and the uh, time uh, when the user has typed these um, tweet. So every time the user submit a new tweet, we save it inside this uh, tweets array. Then uh, we empty the tweet uh, message property so that the text area looks empty. After that, we transform the tweets uh, array into a JSON string uh, that we can later save inside the local storage using the local storage API. Uh, the set item method and using a simple tweet uh, tweets um, key that we use to retrieve later on we will use it to retrieve these uh, tweets so next thing uh, the next thing that we need to do is actually is actually um, implement this show tweets message uh, box. So let's do that. And uh, how we can do that is by uh, creating something inside this uh, HTML file that we can use uh, to show the tweets that we have inside this tweet array. So we will need to use a beef um, to check if there are tweets inside this uh, tweets array. Uh, but the main part, the main thing that we need to check to use is the v4 directive uh, to loop over uh, the tweets array and grab every time a different tweet. So let's do that. So let's first have a div with the class card tweets. Uh, so beyond scenes, uh, uh, we are using the classes that we defined inside the CSS file that I created for this 
a demo and so if you are following along make sure to use the same classes otherwise the look will be different and in here so we can have a section and the section can have a class of tweets and we can use the section to verify if there are tweets otherwise we will not show it uh, maybe we can do it directly up here we if no uh, so if the tweets length is greater than zero then we show everything uh, inside everything there is inside uh, so inside we have a um, section with tweets class and inside it we can have an h2 h2 and see just tweets and after that we can have a div with the class uh, class tweet msg and we can use the before directive on this element and loop over the tweets and grab also the index of each tweet and say in tweets so we use the before directive to loop over the tweets array and uh, show wherever we want to show so the first thing we want to show of course is the tweet message so the text and after that we can have a different div always inside this tweet message box uh, that we can say the tweet date something like that and we can have an icon for the for the date like a calendar icon uh font album is going to be what we what we use uh calendar and the icon is going to be small and after that we can output the date so the tweet the date and we grab the date date the date property of the tweet so now uh, in case we have nothing to show we should show to the user um, something else so we can use div and cbls uh, not with c yet maybe okay now um what we have done here is to wrap everything in a div with the class of card tweets uh that we have applied some style to it then we use the v directive uh to check if there is actually a tweet uh so if the tweets array has any length so has anything inside it and if so we will show whatever we place inside uh the the tweet card the tweets card otherwise we will show a, a different message so not tweets to show and after that we use v4 directive to loop over the tweets array and take wherever um tweet we have uh, so every time we have a tweet we save it to the uh, tweet um, variable here and we also grab the index because we will need to use the index later on um, when we actually implement the remove uh, tweet um, feature for the user and so we grab immediately the index because we know we will use it later uh, then inside this uh, tweet message element we have a paragraph which we use to output the actual text of our tweet then we have another div uh, with the tweet uh, date class that we will use we use to output date with a nice icon uh, to display when the uh, tweet was um, submitted so the next thing we need to do um, 
is actually to make this data persistent. Let's first see how it likes, how it looks like. So uh, let's type something. Um, my first tweet. Okay. And then my next tweet. Okay. And as you see, the last tweet I typed is up here, so it's at the top, and then the the first is at the bottom. So every time I type, the tweet will be the last tweet will be at the top. And so my third tweet. If you press, of course, center, uh, you go to a new line in the text style. So we, you need to press this um, tweet button, and we have our third element. Okay, so now uh, if we refresh the page, everything is gone and we see no tweets to show yet. And we will need to move this, it's ugly, right here, but we can do it later. Now let's, few, let's work on the actual features of the application. Uh, so now um, we need a way to retrieve this data from the local storage because we actually store them in the local storage. And uh, repopulate this tweets array um, before we actually visit the page. So uh, as we did before in the previous videos, we need to use the local storage, but together with a lifecycle look that we can use to inject code uh, before the actual uh, element is mounted and then repopulate the tweets uh, property and so show all the tweets that we saved in the local storage right onto the page. So the next thing we can keep working inside this uh, created lifecycle hook and we first need to um, uh, take uh, the um, uh, tweets from the local storage and verify if there are tweets in the local storage. So the first thing is going to be check if the local storage has any uh, as any uh, tweet, so local storage dot get item and simple tweet tweets. So that's gonna be our key. So if we have anything inside, we can move forward and log to the console something um, like there is. List of tweets, something like that, and if, of course we have this list of, list of tweets, we can save it back to the tweets array, uh, and we assign it the opposite thing that we did before. So we use the JSON, but this time instead of stringify, we use parse, and we grab from the local storage wherever we have. So saved inside this simple tweets key tweet we can you can use a better uh, key for the local storage item uh, but it doesn't really matter uh, so we take it back and we save it so we transform it back to an array and we save it uh, inside these tweets um, property and now um, if we have nothing we could use else and say a console log not it's yet okay and uh, let's see if it works so we should have a couple of tweets and we have three tweets so those I typed before and so it works if we refresh the page the tweet won't uh, go away so they will be still here if I type another tweet the fourth tweet will be here added onto the top and if we refresh the page it will still be here so it's persistent every time we type something it stays here 
So the next thing that I want to do is actually implement a feature for the user that let him uh, or her le remove a tweet. So right under this, uh, well, where we can put this, uh, let's see, uh, we can add it right here, maybe, uh, just up to the date. We can have a new div and we can call it tweet remove so we add the class to tweet remove to this element and inside we can have a span element and say delete this tweet and maybe we can also have an icon with trash um so a trash icon so if i trash okay and the icon can be small okay so every time we click on uh, this element we want to trigger a new method that we actually have to create so the method could be called remove tweet so click on click we want to trigger this element uh, this method uh, remove it and uh, we need to uh, tell to the method uh, what kind of what number so the number of the tweet that we want to remove and it happens that we have an index that we can use so we can just copy that inside the method call and we can also have a class here of remove so it should be styled nicely so we have everything in place we actually need to create this uh, remove tweet method so after this um, send tweet we need, we can collapse this uh, we don't have to do anything else inside the send tweet method and we need to create a remove tweet and we pass an index so this uh, method is gonna accept an index um, and the index is going to be the number that we pass when we call this method and uh, so we can actually remove it so let's create a new uh, before removing it might be better to ask to the user confirmation so we can have a remove it like a variable and say confirm what are you sure you want to remove this tweet? Are you sure you want to remove this tweet? If the mm, response is okay, so it's going to be uh, true, then we can move forward and actually remove this tweet. So if remove it, what we can do is grab these tweets uh tweets so we have a tweets property that has all the tweets inside it uh, we can remove a single tweet using the splice method on the array and we pass we need to pass the uh, position of the of the element and then how many elements it should uh, delete so just one element and the index is going to be inside the index property and after that we can also remove um, the remove from the local storage so we can remove the tweet from the local storage um, remove tweet okay how do we remove this we can simply uh, save uh, the new spring uh, stringified version of the tweets array back into the local storage and overwrite whatever we saved before so that um, everything should work fine so local storage and we can we should be able to call this like that
and say this is going to be equal to JSON, JSON Springify and the streets. Okay, let's see if, if, if it works and uh, if it asks me for confirmation before actually deleting this tweet. So we have this uh, delete this mess this tweet and as you see there is a bit of style so when we over it uh, the text becomes red we can press this and we see a message so a nice pop-up that appears and tells us uh, are you sure you want to delete uh, this tweet if we press cancel we should still be able to see the tweet nothing happens if we refresh the page we still have four tweets let's try it again and press ok uh, as you see as soon as i pressed ok the fourth tweet was removed from the list and if we refresh now we should still see the three tweets uh, and nothing else so we can remove more tweets and add more tweets okay and uh, it worked we can delete this again and everything seems um, to work fine so let's quickly have a look around and um, see our final code how it looks like and what we have and uh, we can code today because the application is working and as expected of course there is uh, room for improvement you can uh, take all the knowledge that you have and improve the application if you want and let's quickly review the code so we have actually three parts so we have a registration uh, form right here then we have an add tweet box right here and then we have a show all tweets so this uh, show the tweets that we have inside the that object uh, the first element actually has a registration form where we can uh, show to the user um, all the fields he can fill to register itself and then after he has completed the registration he will see the tweet box right here and the tweet box will uh, let him submit a tweet using a form and the v model directive which binds the text area to the proper to a property that we defined inside the view instance and the view instance uh, has uh, three main methods uh, and they create a life cycle look and inside the data object we have a bunch of properties that we used to save the user information when the user registers itself, uh, then um, an email and the name and the password properties that we used uh, to bind uh, input tags onto the HTML with the this property uh, on the view instance, and then we used them all uh, to populate the user data object. Uh, via this registration uh, method, so the register account method, and um, we also also checked if there was something typed inside the registration field for the name, for the email, for the password. If so, we uh, save this information inside this um, user data. After that, uh, if this one of these was empty, we show the the server message otherwise we can move forward and save uh, this registration data to the local storage and so we could grab them uh, later to show a message a welcome message to the user and then of course we have to empty all these input fields and these related properties so the name the email and the password will be emptied at the end of the registration uh, so we can uh, move forward and uh, write 
our first tweet. So when the user filled the other uh, for the other form, or the one for the tweet, uh, we can uh, we stored all the information inside a tweet's property. We grabbed the text that the user um, typed and that we saved inside this tweet message property and we save it inside the property we call text uh, and another property we created a date property uh, to store the date when the user typed this uh, tweet and we the unshift method on this tweets array we saved every time the user types and then submit this uh, tweet we saved uh, this object inside this array the tweets array and after that we emptied again the tweet uh, text area and then transformed all the tweets that the user typed uh, into a string so that we could save it inside the local storage and then we could retrieve this information uh, via a created action hook a lifecycle hook and um, using that we mm, we restored uh, we parsed the um, uh, this string from the local storage uh, back to an array and then we save it back to the uh, property tweets and so we could output all the tweets onto the page and we also implemented this remove future uh, to let the user remove a tweet after it was typed so that's it for this video we will move forward in the next uh, um in the next video we will move forward with our view uh, journey and we will learn uh, about components and how to use them when to use them what they are and all about components so i'll see you in the next video cheers